Welcome to ATF TV. This is Christine Joe reporting from London. We are joined by international corporate lawyer Santosh Pai, who speaks to us today from New Delhi. Santosh has written this week for ATF about how India is trying to change its dependency on imports from China. Thanks for joining us today, Santosh. Thank you, Christine. Pleasure to be here. So, India-China trade, it's a big story. Delhi, like many governments, has become worried about how dependent it has become on Chinese products. But you write that there's more to this than a bitter border dispute. What's the real story here? Yes, you know, uh, for many other countries, the realization that they were too dependent on China came in a gradual manner. For instance, USA and Australia for many years have been aware of this. For India, this realization has come all of a sudden. Until late last year, the leaders of India and China were very keen to, in fact, expand their economic engagement. But this year, due to a series of events, this uh, has come a U-turn and India has now decided to do as much as possible in as short time as possible to decouple the Indian economy from its dependence on China. Okay. You have looked in some details into the import and manufacturing data that sit behind this story and how India's seasonal demand plays a significant role here. Can you unwrap some of that, please? Sure. So uh, India-China bilateral trade peaked in 2018 at around $95 billion. And it was expected that in a couple of years, it will reach $100 billion. The interesting aspect is the import basket comprises of intermediate goods, consumer goods, and even raw materials for many uh, industries such as pharmaceuticals. It's not a homogeneous basket. So the pain of reducing imports of Chinese products would be felt throughout the Indian economy. As you've explained, this is a national aim of India's to help promote the sale of its own products around the world. But can it work? Well, there are many objectives, actually. One is to expand the contribution of the manufacturing sector in India, which is very weak and very small in proportion to the services sector. It is also to generate employment in India and aid in the economic recovery after uh, COVID. And of course, uh, in due course, uh, it is to offer India as an alternative destination for investors looking to diversify away from China and establish global manufacturing facilities. More the merrier. So it seems. <laughs> India and China are very differently politically and economically. Can India really become a successful global manufacturing powerhouse? Yes, this is a very important question. And uh, the answer is unclear. India has a federal system with uh, many states competing for foreign investors. At the same time, the foreign investment policy is dictated by the center. And for almost 20, 30 years now, the effectiveness of India's foreign investment regime has not been very good. The performance has not been consistent. Uh, there have been a number of instances where foreign investors who have made commitments to the Indian market have been disappointed by turnarounds in policy and so on. So this will be a very important challenge for India to overcome. Thank you, Santosh. And thank you all for watching. To read Santosh's piece in full and many more others like it, please check out asiatimesfinancial.com for the world's best news on Asian markets, economies, and more. I'm Christine Joe reporting for ATF TV from London.